book hero who's launched a new wave of violent action. Issue number five, my guy had his first kill. Violent action that spawned a new movie and made the superhero's creator a multimillionaire. We're pretty much number one every month. He's kind of the new wave single character. A renegade hero, his maverick creator, and the violent action they're selling your kids. Next, Frazier. Impact, a collaboration of two of the world's leading news organizations, CNN and Time. From Washington, D.C., here's Bernard Shaw. Welcome to Impact. Our first story touches on summer pop culture in the United States. Another movie based on a comic book character opens Friday on 2,500 screens across the country. And this character may leave you wondering what has happened to America's superheroes. Stephen Frazier looked into that question. He's in Atlanta. Bernie, this movie's called Spawn, and it's a good example of what comic book artists have done to compete for the attention of a young audience that also has MTV, internet websites, and Sony PlayStation for amusements. Comics are two-dimensional, after all. They don't move or make noises, and they require that the user sit still and read. Surely a recipe for disaster. But no, comic books are a billion dollar a year industry, and nobody sells more of them than Todd McFarlane, the 36-year-old Canadian who created Spawn. Uh, no, the cover from issue one I'm talking about. If you look at the blood on the cover of issue one, right. um, it, it came out a little more red when it printed. On the speakerphone with his printer, Todd McFarlane works yeah, hard to like get the, the blood okay. just right in his stories. Often his hero has blood on his hands. Issue number five, my guy had his first kill. The issue in which McFarlane's hero killed an opponent, something Superman and Batman never do, was the best-selling comic book that month. So were most of the issues since more than 60. In comic books, I'm, I mean, if you collect comic books, he's he's a big he's a big boy, you know. So we're pretty much number one every month. So he's kind of the new wave single character, like what I think they they think Batman should be if he was started in the 1990s. New wave, indeed. The first superhero who's dead. McFarlane's character, named Spawn, is a reanimated corpse. Spawn is. A man that was in love with his wife, that, that basically was betrayed by f friends and, and co-workers, and, and is now back from the dead five years later. Back from hell after his betrayal and murder to see his wife one last time. A return to life granted by Satan, who also gave Spawn special powers. Spawn's part of the bargain is to lead hell's army during Armageddon. But these details are only gradually made clear to Spawn, and he's horrified to learn what he's become. Thus, an action hero who's morally conflicted. He's not such a nice guy, but eventually he'll figure it out and he'll turn into a decent guy. I think that that audience appreciates, you know, kind of like the, the, the post-apocalyptic kind of feel of stuff. They just like something that's got shadows and what's lurking around the corners, a little bit of a thrill to it, instead of, you know, here's the good guy, here's the bad guy, here's what they're going to do, and here's the happy ending. He's like a bad guy and good guy put together. 12-year-old Alex Kenny, an occasional Spawn reader. Sometimes it's got, like, nice pictures where it's, like, really detailed, and sometimes it's just got stuff splattered all over the place. He says he doesn't like all the splattering, but he'd better get used to it. Time to pay the piper. Because soon, Spawn will be splattered all over popular culture. Get off me! In an animated series already on cable TV. From man to Spawn. And in a $45 million movie opening this month with Michael White in the title role and special effects by Industrial Light and Magic, the creators of Star Wars. And they kept it as a take. That's a good take. We'll keep that take. 
there's a Spawn video game, and entire shelves of Spawn action figure toys, mostly gruesome monsters Spawn must fight. McFarlane wants Spawn to be a household name, like Superman. Is he Superman or Batman right now? No. And so that's where, again, some of the edge comes that I keep telling people, this guy's going to be around for 20 years, and so he's not going to be a Boy Scout right off the bat. The redeeming value of Superman was that there was good. Alex Kenny's fun. mother, Candy, says McFarlane's ambition is really just greed. I think he, you know, he, he's out for the dollar. You know, he, he realizes that Superman has been around and is a household name and has been um, because he reached all ages. It's not about world domination, making a lot of money, selling a lot of product. It's about coming up with an idea. It happens to be called Spawn right now. It's my little creative child, and it's about showing it to the world in as many different places and corners and formats as possible so that maybe someday somebody goes, Spawn, and go, oh, yeah, I know who that is. Mm. That's it. Other than that, but while showing the world his little creative child, McFarlane was also showing up his ex-bosses, and that's no small part of his motivation. Six years ago, McFarlane was drawing Spider-Man from Marvel Comics. It was a dream job, the top of the industry. How much were they paying you when you had it all together? <laughs> at, at the end, I don't know, probably two million bucks or something. Life should have been perfect, but he felt denied his proper share of the profits. And worse, he says, he was denied a say in the editorial direction of the story. You, they give you a book, sales aren't doing very good. Even if it's a character we all know, okay? <clears throat> and they go, do whatever you want. Sales are in the tank. Cool. So you take off and you do it and all of a sudden the sales ramp up. But at a certain point, they weren't on the train and all of a sudden you get to this point right here and all of a sudden they want to be the engineer. Because now it's popular. Now they're like going, oh Todd, you can't do that and you can't do this. Oh, why? Because now so many people are buying it and watching it that all of a sudden now you can't do the things that brought it up to that point. It came down to this panel. Executives at Marvel said the original was too violent because McFarlane had the blade piercing the eye. They asked him to draw it again. Instead, McFarlane threw down his pencil and walked out. So you took a, a big leap for respect? Well, yeah. I mean, the, in the first issue of Spawn, then I wrote a, a one-page letter column, and that's what it was about, respect. It wasn't about money. We never, I didn't want money. I didn't want the trademark to Spider-Man. I mean, I know, you know, I'm, I'm not that silly. It's just that when you're having a discussion about the direction of Spider-Man, why wouldn't you include the guy who's selling the most Spider-Man books in the country, in, 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 in the history of your company? God forbid, you know? Uh, I'll give you a quick update here. Working from two rooms in his house in Phoenix, McFarland started his own company, Image Comics. T-shirts and bare feet are the office dress code. But there's nothing casual about the profits generated here. Image and the six other companies McFarland founded to make toys and additional spawn merchandise together earn $150 million a year. Get a holster on his leg. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's right. The double-barrel shotgun goes in there. And he's got the chainsaw in his other hand. Well, whose gun is this, then? Which one? I got, there's another big gun here. And he's got the other big gun, too. I mean, he's completely decked out. Okay, cool. The company succeed, says McFarlane, because his partners and subcontractors pay attention to details, like the plastic in the toys. Yeah, yeah, we can get, like, a really nice uh, skeletal feel on it. Okay, cool. Serious business. And this guy isn't going to fart for us, huh? You know, I found the very mechanism that they said would not work. Here it is. This is a man personally worth more than $75 million. I, look, I found one, too. And he credits this teenager's irreverence for it all. Okay, you got me busted. Hey, what's driving all this? He's driving it, you know, a, a certain amount of rage. Uh, anger at, at, at people trying to dictate your life to I, 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 and I don't know where that comes from either. I just, I, I resent people being in a position to be able to have authority over me, you know? And maybe it's just that teenager in all of us. Gee, I wonder what that red stuff is going through there. Mm. That's a vital body fluid. Ah, I thought so. Candy Kenny worries about Todd McFarlane's effect on her mm. pre-teenager. When you think of that, 
It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> she campaigns in schools now against comic book violence. You know, as a parent, we're always worried about um, the violence that kids are more and more comfortable with. And this, to me, seemed a logical um, place where it's beginning. He does it well. You think this is well done? In, this, in his standards of, yeah, of gore. I think the shiny paper makes the blood look all that much juicier. <laughs> I think the shiny paper makes, uh, you know, the, the drool and the, off the teeth and everything look, um, look all that much more gruesome. And you go get an education today. McFarlane has children, too. He's a devoted father Come. and protective. Okay, good daddy kiss. But he doesn't think Spawn is a bad influence. Thanks for coming. I don't present those ideas because I think that's what society is. It's not, it's not that deep. It's, it's, it's the eight-year-old boy inside of me that goes, what did you like? I like monsters. You'll see that I got a lot of monsters in my book. And it's not about that I think there's a deterioration in civilized society in America today, which let, let, let somebody else debate that. It's about monsters. Cool. McFarlane's partners in the movie hope it's a monster at the box office, like his other ventures, which are having their best year ever. But Marvel Comics, the company McFarlane left behind because he thought there were too many suits managing the creative guys, Marvel is mired in bankruptcy proceedings. The story continues online. Join our discussion after the program in the Impact Forum at cnn.com impact. Next, on Impact.